Okay. Whatever. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg Pearson. And uh, first, let me ask, uh, who knows what an OHV vehicle is? Anybody? Off-road vehicles? Motorcycle, dirt bike, ATV, snowmobile, anything like that? Okay. All right, well, that's, that's what they are, basically. Uh, like dirt bikes, any type of modified like car, truck, it goes like basically anything off-road. And so my main claim is that OHV vehicles and their owners and users have a positive impact on the environment and the environment and the com community in which they exist. Um, quick background, like I said, the OHV vehicles are, you know, dirt bikes, motorcycles, uh, modified cars and trucks, uh, snowmobile squads, anything like that. Um, the OHV vehicles, they are a year-round experience. You know, you got summertime, wintertime, like everything you do all the time. And for each one of those different types of things, there's usually a club or some type of membership that you can uh, join and like be a part of. Uh, so my supporting claims are that uh, the, pol the pollution emitted by OHV vehicles is not excessive. Uh, club membership uh, supports envi environmentalism. And the people who are part of clubs influence people in their communities in a positive way. Uh, for my first one, the pollution emitted by OHG vehicles is not excessive. Um, we have many different times where OHG areas have been um, threatened to be closed down for excessive pollution in the area. Um, uh, BLM, which is the Bureau of Land Management, um, wants to close more OHG areas in Clear, Clear Creek, California for that excessive pollution in the area. Uh, about in 2000, Yellowstone tried to stop all snowmobile transportation um, during the wintertime because uh, reporters said that snowmobiles drive by, quote, leaving a smelly blue haze in their wake. And this is pretty much untrue. It used to be true back when there was two-stroke vehicles all the time. Now that technology is great, uh, it's gotten better and there's four-stroke uh, vehicles and everything, uh, the gas mileage on uh, those ranges between 20 and 40 miles per gallon, with the average being about 32. And that's more than the average car that you drive every single day. So obviously, there can't be that much pollution emitted when you're only using your OHU vehicles on the weekends or on certain times like that. Whereas you drive your car, which is maybe 20, 25 miles per gallon, or even less if you drive a big truck every single day. Um, my second claim that a club membership supports environmentalism is that um, like any of the clubs you can join for all the different types that there are, uh, they all like, they set up times where you can go out and clean up the areas in which they perform all their stuff. Um, uh, this place called, or this company called Clean Desert sponsored a cleanup in Barstow, California on October 18, 2008. And according to Off-Road Magazine, in total we filled, filled up six, dump, six dumpsters uh, not including more than 200 tires that weren't thrown in the dumpsters. And besides finding tires and the normal little trash, the cleanup crew grabbed refrigerators, washing machines, couches, beds, toilets, wood, and even two cars out of the desert. Um, this isn't just the only time they've done this. They've done this uh, several different times. They had first started in 2006, and they had one in 2006, three in 2007, four in 2008, two in 2009, and they have many planned ones for 2010. Uh, so, as you can see, all of these clubs and whatnot, they are devoted to keeping the, the environment clean and all the places open so that way everyone can ha enjoy the areas that, you know, some people like that own all these cars and everything can go out there and enjoy. Um, my last supporting claim is that the people who are part of these clubs influence uh, their communities in a positive way. Um, many of uh, the OHV vehicles you can see in people's driveways. Um, and they usually, you know, some really big truck, bunch of dirt bikes or anything like that. You can usually see that from the driveway or when they have the garage open or anything like that. So, you know, if you are interested or anything like that, you, anybody usually owns those. They're very open to talking about them. You know, most of those people have a passion. You know, they have a certain dirt bike for a certain reason or they have, you know, a certain car that they modified or something. And they're usually pretty proud of their work. And so it's really easy to go and talk to them. And because you can talk to them, then you know, then that adds one more person, and then they'll talk to someone else, and it just it keeps adding, you know. 
So in their community, it just ends up being a positive influence because you know it gives everyone something to do on the weekends. They can all get together and everything like that. And uh, um, also because like they are able to get together and then they can go out like on the weekends and you know explore just the environment, just go for a drive or something, just out into the middle of nowhere almost. And, um, so really, you can really see the natural beauty of uh, the environment around you guys. And so, that's about it. All right, well, uh, your survey at the beginning ends up being a little more confusing. I think you probably just want to phrase that attention device differently instead of trying to get a reaction from the audience. Uh, you identify what your proposition is, but the phrase has multiple parts at the, in the uh, first section and multiple parts in the second section, so you need to simplify it more. You did lay out the structure of the speech, so it's going to be fairly easy to uh, follow. Uh, same kind of problem, though, with some of those secondary claims. The phrasing is a little bit awkward. And you do give some background on the controversy, which I thought was nice. On the first point, I thought you, had a, you did a good job presenting some examples to support your position, and you had some good specific instances to back it up. Some statistics would have been really helpful here. Uh, the second and the third points, I think, were a little uh, thin on support. Uh, you needed some additional information to show the impact there. Your whole justification on the one point about the four-stroke versus the two-stroke engines, for instance, we need some quantification on this. Uh, we need the, um, you know, some data that talks about how uh, the two-stroke engines have virtually disappeared and have been replaced by four-stroke engines, or that uh, there's a, a law that prevents the two-stroke engines from operating in these environments, and only four-stroke engines, which are so much cleaner, uh, are the ones that are operating there. And also something that says that that's the main kind of pollution that they're concerned about is the um, environmental pollution. Actually, that's the first point. And the second point was the example on the cleaning up. And that's where you had the good example evidence. All right, so I think you need a little bit more supporting evidence, particularly on that third point. It's, it's really conclusionary. I thought you did a nice job talking to the audience. Got to work on a better exit line, then that's about it. And that's about it.